everyone, my name is Jennifer Maker, and today I'm teaching you about Cricut Design Space for desktop and laptop. This is the Cricut Kickoff Lesson 3, and we're going to go over the primary functions of Design Space so you will feel more comfortable in the software, and then we will create something fun together. Now, in Lesson 1 of Cricut Kickoff, we downloaded and installed the free Design Space app from cricut.com slash setup. Remember that? We created a Cricut ID or we signed in with the one that we had and then we did our very first test cut. Today we're going to dive into design space itself and see how it all works. Before I get too far, I want to remind you about my free Cricut Kickoff Principal Handbook that goes along with these lessons. You can download it right now at cricutkickoff.com. Just register for the class. It's all free and you will get the handbook. I'll be referring to it as we go along during today's lesson. And there's one thing in particular that's important, which is in um, everything is organized by our lessons. But when we get to lesson three, we actually, I actually have all the instructions also. So here is lesson three that we're doing right now. There's the checklist. But of particular importance is the map that I made of design space. Everything is labeled on this. So if I say something that you didn't quite catch or you're like, what was that thing? I want you to check this because chances are really good it's on here. You don't have to guess at it. It's all labeled onto this, this map, okay? And this is in the handbook. And our, the instructions to do tonight's project are in there as well. So I invite you to pull up a chair in my craft room and we will get started talking about design space. <clears throat> All righty. Be sure you get this. This is awesome. It's got some great places to keep notes as well. Again, that's at cricutkickoff.com. All right. So what is Cricut Design Space? So Cricut Design Space is the free companion app to your Cricut cutting machine. Design Space, or DS as some will call it, lets you design and cut with your Cricut. You can create projects from scratch, use one of Cricut's images, or upload images. And again, this is free software. So even if you don't currently have a Cricut cutting machine, you can download this software free right now and play around with it first. Many people do that, in fact. So let's go ahead and go into Design Space app on my Mac so you can see what it looks like. All right, so give me just a second. We're going to switch over there. This should be it. Here we go. Nope, that's my blog. <laughs> that's also my blog. Hang on. I probably just had the wrong one selected. One moment, please. There we go. There's my Cricut Design Space. <laughs> All right, so here is Cricut Design Space. Now Cricut Design Space for desktop looks the same on Mac and Windows. Uh, the current system requirements for Cricut Design Space on Windows are to have Windows 8 or later, and at least four gigabytes of RAM or more, and at least two gigabytes of free disk space. On the Mac, you need to be running OS 10.15 or later, and have at least four gigabytes of RAM and two gigabytes of free disk space. These things do matter. If you find Cricut Design Space seems really slow, the likely culprit is your computer's CPU, memory, or available hard drive space. Cricut Design Space is very fast for me, and I have virtually no problems with it ever. And I'm going to see if I can, one moment, will this work? Yes, it does work. I'm a little small. Sometimes it's people tell me that they like seeing my face. So I will put this on and I'll try to remember to hide it if it's ever covering anything up. Okay. All right. So here we are in Cricut Design Space. This is, I am on my Mac, but again, it's going to work the same on Windows and Mac, but you know, I can only show you one at a time and I'm a Mac girl. <laughs> All right, so this is what you see when you first open up Cricut Design Space. This is your home screen and I'm probably going to look at the screen, so don't be surprised by that. I have two windows here. All right, so this is Cricut Design Space here and I want to show you this is the home this is the home page. This is what you see when you first show up. So uh, starting, we're going to kind of go in clockwise order. 
This up here is what I call the hamburger menu. And if you click on this, it gives you what I think of as settings. So you can switch between the home page and the canvas. I'll explain the canvas. But over here are a lot of important things. So new product setup, this is what we did in lesson one. Calibration, that is important for calibrating a bunch of things. Um, print then cut and your knife blade if you have a maker. And also, let's click on it. Oh, right now it's showing a new, oh, because I have the Explore selected. Let's switch that right now. So right up here in this menu, I can change which Cricut I um, want to, I can select my machine. So I had the Explore selected, so I'm going to switch it to the Maker 3. Okay, so if you have multiple machines, this is where you will change it right up here. So let's come back over here and go to Calibration. And you can see, here we go. This is where you can calibrate the rotary blade, the knife blade, and the print and cut. You normally only need to do this once. Often it will prompt you if you need to do it. Don't, you don't normally have to do that at all. Manage custom materials is where you will, um, if you have to go in and change settings or create new materials, you can go in there. So when I say you need more pressure, more pressure, um, and you've already selected more pressure, this is where you go to add more pressure. Update firmware, typically, uh, it does this on its own, but if you need to do it, you can do it here. So there's a bunch of things like that here. Cricut Access is here as well. Your sign out is here too. And then a what's new screen tells you what is new lately. So if you've, you know, you've come back after an absent and you're absent, so you're not sure what's going on, check your what new, new, what's new page to see new stuff. All right. Now this up here is Cricut's promotional banner. And if they're having sales or any special events or anything, like here they have classes. Oh no, this is um, projects and images designed for beginners. This is like a, um, like a promotion. So this is good to watch. Right below this is the search bar. This is new. So you can search images, projects, and profiles here. Like you could search up, you could search Jennifer Maker. I've never actually tried that. But if you're looking for something, um, it works uh, really well to, to search across Oh look, you can search, this is like probably all my stuff here. Oh look, look at all of these profiles I've made <laughs> when I've been setting up crickets. Okay, anyways, you don't want all those, those you only want the real one. All right, and then uh, these down here will lead you to some, like they, they're seasonal and they'll change. Now here, our featured image is, and this is also new. This is new images or things that are seasonal that Cricut thinks you might enjoy. So they're just here. And here are your new projects, or sorry, here are your projects. So it says my projects right here. Now I want you to notice it's kind of pushed down a little bit, right? So if you come back in here after an absence and you're like, where are my projects go? Scroll down, okay, they're right here. You can always click on view all to see them all if you want. And they're in you know, chronological order or, or reverse chronological order. This is your most recent one here. You can see our projects that we've been doing today. You can always start a new project right here with the new project button. And then the strip below that are Cricut's YouTube videos. So if you want to learn more about various features, this is a great place to go. Like about, you know, you can learn about the automatic background remover and it's, they're usually short videos and you can learn all about them there. And then they have but these, the, everything that comes after this are often like ready to make projects and they change, right? So it's usually seasonal, but you can get some great ideas on things here. And here's the community projects right here. All right, so going back up to the top, uh, here we have a, a much easier way to get to your, my projects. This is where I always go. So if you click here, it just takes you to all of your projects. That's the, the quickest way. And so this is everything that you've ever saved to the Cricut Cloud as a project. Images are actually, you know, under the images tab, but this is all of your projects. So this is everything going back to, for me to when I first started using Cricut. And when I say Cricut Cloud, I mean to their servers. And that allows us by putting it into the Cricut Cloud, that allows us to access our projects on any device, any account, no, sorry, not any account, any computer. So I could be at my sister's house and I could log in the Cricut Design Space there on my Cricut ID and access my things there. Or I, when I get a new iPhone, I just sign in with my Cricut ID and all my projects are there, which I love. And you can search it here too. 
And let's see, and then I'm going back to home. Let's go back to home. This is where we were. This, of course, is the machine selection. I have all of the five of the machines. And then right here is where we can start a new project. So there's two places for that. They're the same, they do the same thing. So there's this button and there's this button here. So they're, they're identical and let's go ahead and click on new project. And that brings us to our canvas. Our canvas is where we design all of our projects and it's this, this big gridded area is you know, technically where you actually do your design work. There are icons along the left and the top and this is the layers panel and then at the bottom of the layers panel there's more icons and I know that might seem like a lot but they're they're laid out pretty logically okay so if we ever need to start a new project again we can click right here to do that right below that we have our templates templates uh, give you like t-shirts shapes and stuff so you can see how things look on various things projects are ready to make projects Images are all of the images that are in Cricut Design Space. Not everyone's uploaded images, but all of the images that are in their library, both free and paid. And right now there are over 230,000 of them. They have a very large library. And if you are a Cricut Access subscriber, you get access to over 200,000 of those images free of charge while you're a subscriber. This is a good time for me to tell you about Cricut Access, in fact. So Cricut Access is a subscription plan that allows unlimited use of over 200,000 of Cricut's graphics and fonts and ready-to-cut projects. Uh, there's really quite a lot. Access subscribers also get discounts on Cricut.com purchases a priority member care line to contact and special offers on products reserved just for access subscribers. It is an optional subscription plan that provides benefits such as access to the images, fonts and projects for free and licensed images at a discounted price. A lot of people confuse Cricut Access with Design Space, but they are not the same. Cricut Design Space is the free software that we're in right now that you use to create or upload designs and cut them on your Cricut. All the Cricut Explore series, both the Air 2 and the, the 3, the Maker, the Maker 3 and Enjoy, need to download and use the free Cricut Design si Space software, but they do not need to pay for Cricut Access unless they want to. Most people ask me if I think Cricut Access is worth it, and I think it is if you will use it. So basically the benefits are that you get access um, that with Cricut Access, you get access to over 200,000 images. And by the way, that number is constantly growing. Like, I'm going to switch to my face. I don't to keep looking at that. Uh, when I did the Cricut kickoff one year ago, they had over 100,000 images. Now they have over 200,000 images. And uh, the people that were in Access, subscribers, they didn't have to, you know, pay twice to get it. They just keep adding to their library. Um, and they, oh, and then you get access to like over 500 fonts, including writing fonts. And that for me personally is reason enough alone. If you ever buy images or fonts from Design Space, an access subscription pays for itself very quickly. You also get the faster member support, uh, like twice as fast because you can get priority support over those who don't have access because it's a perk. You also can save 10 to 20% off product purchases from Cricut.com. Um, the variation is whether you're standard or premium um, subscriber, right? And then you can save 10% off of some of the premium licensed things. And another perk is the exclusive discounts on products like the mystery boxes with Cricut Cutie figures. If you want to learn more about Cricut Access, go to jennifermaker.com slash Cricut dash access to see a list of all of the benefits and a bunch of other answers to questions I get. Now I have Cricut Access, and that means I have access to a lot, let's see if we can get back here, to a lot of things that you may or may not have. You can tell if something is included in Access by this small green flag in letter A in the top left corner. This identifies the item as one that is included with Cricut Access subscription. If you have a Cricut Access subscription, instead of showing a price at the bottom, it will say subscribe, just like it does here. Okay, so you can see these are all access, access subscription or 
items. And as an Access member, I have access to all of these. Now, if you were not, instead you would see like a price. Or if it's a licensed image, I'm looking for one now that is not a... Okay, here, so this one is purchased. Um, this is one that I, that was probably in some, I don't know what it was in. So this one says purchased, and this one says uploaded. So this is, this is my project that I uploaded. We'll talk about that. So, um, and then if, you, if none of those things apply, you will see a price if you want to buy it. It's up to you. I'm looking for one that has a price. I want you to see what that looks like. Um, now, people will ask if you subscribe to Access and then you are no longer a member, can you still cut your project? You can't, no. So you're basically like renting it. Um, while you're a subscriber. Now they won't delete your project or anything like that. Your project stays in there, assuming you saved it. <laughs> Hopefully you saved it. But if, um, if you uh, are not an Access subscriber anymore and it uses Access images that you didn't buy, it will prompt you to buy them or, or you can just resubscribe, okay? Um, let's, let's look for a Star Wars one. That's a licensed one. Those are not usually. Those are usually ones that you like have to buy. Um, sometimes here we go. Right. So, the, so there's the price, um, and it just says it right there at the bottom. Now you can go ahead and put them onto your canvas and play around with them to your heart's content. You are not charged until you actually go to cut them. Okay. So you can. It's it's fine to mess around with them and play with them and experiment with them, and you don't have to pay for it. And once you pay for it, it's yours. Uh, you don't, you're not going to get charged every time you go to cut it. It's, it stays in your account. And um, for licensed things like this, you can't sell them. But for all the other things, you can. Like as long as it's not a licensed thing. Cricket's Angel Policy lays everything out for you. All right, so let's get off of Star Wars. Now, if you don't have Cricut Access, don't intend to. You can see there's free files too. So if you click on this filter right here, um, this actually, all of this will let you look for lots of different kinds of images. But this will show me all the free images that are available right now. And as you can see, there's a bunch. There's a whole calendar set. Here, this, this is a card. This is the smile card, if anyone recognizes that. That's one of the early um, test cuts they had people do with the maker years ago. Uh, so lots of cute things. But I want to note that not all free things stay free. So uh, Cricut has free images each week. And so they're, they're available for a while. And so you can cut them while they say they're free, but later on, if they're not free, they become part of Cricut Access. So you'd wanna either have a subscription or pay for them. Uh, all right, so let's find a free image. Um, well, actually, no, let's keep going down and looking at our canvas because we have other things to talk about. So below images, we have text. And I'll show you how that works when we get to our project. Then we have shapes. So I'm going to click on shapes. Now, uh, on this is a newer feature. It used to be there were only eight shapes, nine shapes, something, ten shapes. I don't know that many. They've added new shapes, and as you can see here, so these are all free. We didn't used to have quite so many. Now we have more shapes, and then there are some extra shapes for those who have Cricut Access. So just some bonus shapes, and there's really even more too. So right here, you can do you can search for more if you're an Access member. So if you are, however, not in Access, you can use these shapes. I'm going to go ahead and click on one so you can see how it works. So this is a heart. And there's my heart. And you can zoom in on your canvas so you can see it a little better by clicking on, oops. See, this is where you, I'm now, <laughs> my face is now in the way. Hang on, I'm going to fix that. Well, stick me right here. How's that? <laughs> That shouldn't cover it very much. Okay, so let me try that again so you can see. I'll go back to the way it was at 100%. Okay, so you can zoom in on your canvas so you can see it better with the zoom button right down here. Um, the negative sign makes it smaller and it's not your image that's smaller, it's just your view of it. And the plus sign makes it bigger. So there we go and go up to 300% it's nice and big. All right, so this is the shape. Shapes are fun. I like to start with lots of shapes when I'm designing things. And um, having this shape will help me explain some other things about this. 
Now, first of all, I want you to note that right now this heart is selected, and we can tell because you can see a box all around the heart, right? Also, over here in the layers panel, which is what this whole rectangle here is, we can see that where it says heart, right here, it's kind of, it looks like it's been selected. It's a darker gray. If I click off of it and onto any other part of the canvas, so like over here where it's just a grid line, it's now no longer selected. So now it's over here, it's not darker, and there's no box around it. Okay, so when I say select it, I mean click on it and so that it's selected like this. Now there's these icons around the four corners of your box, your selection box. So the first one right here is to rotate it, and you just click and hold with your mouse and drag your mouse and it rotates just like this. If, however, you hold down your shift key, I'm gonna undo, this is the undo right here. Your best friend is the undo, this arrow, this arrow pointing to the left. If you hold down your shift key on your keyboard, when you rotate, it rotates in these nice little increments here. So if you're trying to get something to rotate perfectly straight, you hold down your shift key on your keyboard. All right, and then right here, this is the resize handle. It's in the lower right corner. You can use this to make your heart bigger or smaller. Now this is actually changing the size of it, and you can, act, you can see up here how I'm changing the size. So here, it's only 1.2 inches in this size box, and you can also see it right here on the, on the corners. It gives you the measurement. So this is big, but I want you to see how as I resize this, it's not, its proportions aren't changing. And if you wanted a chunkier heart, you would need to unlock it with this icon right here in the lower left. So if you click that, it unlocks it. You can see the icon changed. And now if I use this resize handle, I get all of the options to change it, okay? So I can have like a chunkier heart like this. And then this button right here, this X here will delete it. So you can, there's actually three ways to delete. You can click here or undo that. You can select it and click on delete right here. Or uh, one more time, you can use the delete key on your keyboard. All right. I'm going to undo though and go back. There we go. So there's our heart again. And so along the top are a lot of other options um, besides that. So this was the undo key, as I mentioned. This is the redo key. I almost never use that one, but it's there. If like you went backwards and decided, oh no, it was fine after all. And so you can go back to where you were. There, I people will ask me how many times you can undo and redo, and I have yet to find a limit. So it, whatever it is, I counted once and it was like well over 100. So. <laughs> So it's a lot, so you probably won't ever encounter it. Um, and then the next menu here is the operation menu, and this changes what our design will do with our crickets. So by default, most designs are, are set to basic cut, which you can see here, basic cut. But if I click on this, I can see all of my options. So I can change it because I'm a, I selected the Maker 3, I get all the options. So I can change the blade to the wavy blade or the perforation blade, or I can change it to draw to with the foil, the pen. I can change it to draw with a pen, or I can use the foil transfer tool, or the scoring tool, the debossing tool, or engraving tool. And then I can also do print and then cut. So whenever I wanna change it to one of these, I just come up to, I just select it and go to operation and change it. And then the edit menu here lets me do copy paste. I usually use my keyboard for this, but if you prefer not to, you can select it here um, or use your keyboard. Offset is a relatively new feature. And if you don't see it in your version of Design Space for Desktop, that means that you have to update your operating system to be, to be newer, okay? So for example, my Mac at home doesn't, I can see, sorry, I can see offset in my menu, but it doesn't function. If I click on it, you'll see it says it's still in beta too. But the real reason is because is I'm not using OS 10.15 at home, this computer is, this, this computer is newer, but I haven't updated my OS at home. So, um, but offset lets you add an offset around words and shapes and layers and you can change the size of it. So there's a big offset. You can even do insets. 
So you can see this blue line has come in. So you can use this to make cool designs, right? And then um, we have the align and arrange. They're grayed out right now because we have just one item selected. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this heart. Uh, there's two ways to duplicate. Well, actually there's several, but strictly duplicate is one of the ways to select the heart and then choose duplicate over here at the top of the layers panel, just like this. And the other way is to use your mouse. You see my mouse? <laughs> and to right click with your mouse and doing that if you right click on it you get this menu this menu is very useful for a bunch of things um, but you can duplicate right from there too so there is a third heart which we don't need so we'll delete that okay so when you have two items now we have the option to align them so we can align all the ways we need to right here and we can flip them Although a heart flipped, it's gonna look the same, but we can flip it the other way. See, there we go, you can flip it. You can also do a range. A range will send items to the back or front or um, up one layer and down one layer. So for example, if you're doing a design and all of a sudden it seems to disappear, chances are what happened is it actually went behind a layer. And so you can come over to the layers panel, look for it and bring it up a little higher so you can see it. And then you have the option to change your size right up here so you can actually type right into these fields and get a more precise measurement, right? So if you need something to be, you know, just as big as your mat, so you want it to cut from edge to edge, that would be 11.49 inches on the Explorers and Makers. Let's uh, make that, so it's pretty big, right? <laughs> But that would cut, like that would fill your mat, right? And, but I can get that, oh, that this, the width is too big. Let's, let's, let's fix that, that was the height. There we go, that would be the correct one to fit. And um, that, it's easier to get that exact measurement when you just type it in. Rotate, I'm, it's the same as this rotate right here. You can just type in the number exactly. And then position is just where it is on your like relative to something else. I don't actually use that one very often. All right, and then coming over here to the layers panel, mostly you see your layers here on the, you know, here you can select them from here. You, you can select both of them by holding down the shift key. So I just held down the shift key on my keyboard and I was able to select both of them. I can also select them both like this by dragging, clicking, dragging, clicking, holding down and dragging my mouse over them both but I can also just go click and hold down shift and click the other one. All right, and then let's see. So let's, uh, let's kind of go backwards here and put our hearts back the way they were. Oops, let's see, there's, a, there's, there's me doing a uh, redo. Okay, so let's, let's zoom in on these. There we go. Still see everything, yes. Okay, oh, and I forgot to tell you how to change colors. So right up here at the top where the operation menu is, next to that is the color picker. And if you click on that, you get access to all the colors. Now the colors are mostly for you know designing. Um, your Cricut doesn't know what color material you put in your mat, but it's useful when you're trying to design, design something. So I can pick the red here, for example, or I can choose a color from the spectrum bar down here. I want something that's like not up here. Right, so there is um, a teal. There we go. So, no, that looks like green. We need to fix that. <laughs> that's definitely, that's the wrong direction. There we go, that's a teal. All right, so um, that's how you can change colors. And you can also change, you can do a bunch there. You can also change your pen colors there. We'll talk about that in a bit. All right, so I wanna talk about the things now at the, um, talk about group okay so let's select both of these hearts and you'll see now that the group option becomes available to click on and I'll go ahead and do that grouping is an organizational method for keeping things together on your canvas but only on your canvas if I were to go ahead and cut this right now the hearts would still be separated from one another so grouping is just uh, just a design tool and you can ungroup right here and then um, at the bottom here, we have more options. Let's select these two again. 
So we can slice. Slicing means to like literally just slice one shape out of another. Slice only works when you have two layers selected and only two. If you have a third or fourth layer hidden in there or you've only selected one layer, it will, you won't be able to use it. Okay, so you can always confirm how many layers you have selected in your layers in your layers menu right here. And you can see I have just two. So if I click slice right now, let me try that again. Oops, no, it worked. I was just being a little impatient. So there is slice and I can pull them away so you can see what they look like. So we get four slice layers and there they all are. And now we've created new shapes. They kind of look like baseball caps, don't they? I just noticed that. It kind of looks like a baseball cap. I like to use slice to make new shapes. Um, a lot of people use slice to slice you know, words out of things or whatever, <laughs> or just change the way an image looks. Slice can be great for that. Um, so I will undo. So that's how slice works. There we go. Uh, something else you can do is weld. So if grouping is a, a attachment, so sorry, grouping is keeping things together on your canvas for design. Weld is the opposite of that. Weld is um, smooshing them together with permanent glue that you cannot remove. <laughs> so if I click weld right now, they're going to meld it together. There we go. So now we have created a brand new shape. You can't even see the other part of that heart that was there. It's all one new shape with three bumps and two points, right? So weld sticks them together permanently. You, there is no unweld option at all. If you want to unweld something, you have to immediately undo it or, you know, keep undoing it until you get back to your pre-weld condition. There we go. So now we're back to before we welded it. And then if you want something in between group and weld, you can use attach. Attach is what I use most of the time. Attach will keep your objects together on your mat and in the exact position as you see on your screen and relative to one another. So these two hearts were on top of each other, but they were distinct. And when I attach them, they're now going to stay together on my mat. That means this one's going to cut out and then this one is going to cut out just right, right where you see these black lines are going to cut out in the same places. So whenever you attach something, because it's going to be cut out on the same mat, it means it's going to change the same color too. Right, so only use attach if you truly want them to be cut on the same mat from the same color of material. Or somehow, some way they need to stay together because you can have combinations like pen on paper which you attach to it. And you, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that when we do our project. So we can detach though. So attach is not permanent. I love that about attach. So I'm gonna detach there. All right. Now the next one over here, flatten. Flatten is for doing print then cut, which you can do on the explorers and the makers, but you cannot do on the joy, okay? So if I wanted to turn these two hearts into a sticker, let's actually go back all the way so that they're two different colors because it'll flatten it and it'll retain the color. So if I click flatten right now, now it is a red and teal heart. We can see that the other one is a heart. It'll cut, it'll print on my printer this heart and then it'll cut around it, right? And um, it says right here that it'll be print and cut. So it tells me what it is. It always tells you what your layer is set to in the layers panel. And I can unflatten too. So there we go, I've unflattened it. Um, no, but it still says print and cut. So let's just undo. We don't wanna have print and cut, there we go. And then there's one last on one contour and I'll need to go grab an image to show you how that works. So I'm gonna go back to images and we're gonna go find ourselves a free image. So we still have free selected right here under images. And let's look for an image that we could use. There's a lot of cute, oh, those are so cute. Toast for a butter, toast for a butter day. Ah, oh, that's cute. I love cute stuff, okay. How about our sunflower from our test? Okay, this will stay free. <laughs> so let's add this to our canvas. So there's our sunflower, kind of big. Let's, let's zoom out a little bit so that we can see it better. I'm just scrolling down so I have more space on my canvas. 
So let's say I really like this sunflower, but I wanted these petals in the back to not be hollow, but instead filled in. And for that, I can use contour. So I'm going to click on it. Contour is all the way over here in the lower right corner of the screen. So we click on contour and we can turn off these parts and they won't be cut. So I can click on the things I don't want to be cut. So I can click on all these petals around the edge here, just like this. And then when I close the window, you will see I have changed it. So if you encounter an image that you want to change in this way, contour is an awesome tool to use to do that. And I think that actually looks kind of cool. All right, so we've talked about shapes and images. So I think it's time for us to do text. And to do text, we're going to want to upload a file. So I'm going to show you how to download an SVG cut file and upload it and customize it, okay? Now I love to create, I love to create designs for you for free. All of my designs are free. I don't charge for them. And I store them all on my blog. So I'm gonna show you where to find my free designs and uh, we're gonna download one and upload it and customize it. Okay, so my website, is right here. So jennifermaker.com is my blog. Um, I have lots of tutorials. So if you have been following me this month at all, you probably saw me talking about them. So for example, distant stickers, right? So stickers, they have a design file and not those things, but oh, this one, our DIY gifts, tons of, tons of designs for that. So to find our design files, you first to identify a tutorial that you want to make and then you can scroll down to the yellow materials box right here that tells you exactly what you need and at the bottom of it it'll always tell you a design number so to make our diy gifts you want design number 362. so to find our designs you go to our library so that's in the red bar at the top of the blog and you can get a password for free if you don't yet have one once you've got your password you click enter the library and it'll ask you to put your password in. Um, it's pretty easy, password. <laughs> so once you're in here, the easiest way to find things is to search the page. So like, what did I say that was 368? I don't think it was 368. Let's put in 368. No, it must have been, I don't remember, 365? I'm totally just guessing now. It was 363, there it is. That's a, nope, nope, 362. <laughs> <laughs> There's a DIY gifts. So whenever we have a project, we put our files first in our list. And then the second thing here is our tutorial or our information about it. What I want you to find today is design number 277. No, design number 277. And I brought, by the way, I brought this little box up I'm searching with by typing command F on my Mac or um, control F on Windows. Okay, um, that's how I found it, if you don't know how to do that. It also actually tells you on the side here. But we want design number 277 because that is our Cricut kickoff certificate. So to download it, you just click on it and it will download, let's try that again. It'll download to your computer and you can just click on um, open and I might have to switch over to my um, desktop so you can see this, just a minute. Hang on a second. It might be a little. There it is. Let's see if I can make this any bigger. Uh, I guess not. This is as good as it's going to get. <laughs> but here is where my downloads folder. And it actually downloaded right there. And I have my browser set to automatically unzip things. Um, but if you don't, you can double click on it or right click on it and choose. Uh, I don't think I have to right click on mine. So what I do on the Mac is I just double click on it and it makes a folder for me. On Windows, you, you typically need to right click on it and there'll be an option to extract or uncompress it. If you don't know how to unzip files, I have a whole tutorial, in fact, a whole video series. Oops, that's covering up my face. I have a whole video series on how to work with SVG files. It's over at jennifermaker.com slash SVGS, it is free. I recommend you watch it. It'll show you how to do it in Windows. I can only show you one computer at a time. Anyway, so um, 
going back to my computer, I have, I want you to show you what's inside the folder, okay? So here we have the actual file itself, the SVG. It says SVG right in the file name. It also says SVG here. And uh, if I scroll over here, it says SVG. Now, if you're on Windows, it might say something more like, it might say SVG in the file name, but over here under like kind or type, it might say um, Chrome HTML or Edge HTML. It is, it's still, that's the SVG. If it says SVG in the file name, you're golden. These other things in the folder are files I always put in my folder. So this explains what this what these files are and where to get more information. So you can kind of see the preview right here. There's like usually a link. If you need to know what this thing is that you downloaded a year ago and you've forgotten about. And then this is where my Cricut discount code is if you ever need it. And this is information about the Cricut Coach Playbook if you ever need it. But the one that we care about is this. What I don't want you to do is double click on it because it will, it doesn't, it will not open up anything useful, okay? So instead, let's go back to Cricut Design Space and I'll teach you how to upload it. So over here, this very last button here, the one that we didn't talk about, that is Upload. And we click on Upload and that brings us to our Upload screen. And we click on Upload Image and then Browse and we want to go find the thing that we just downloaded. So it's usually in your Downloads folder, okay? Windows or Mac, that part doesn't matter. Everyone's got a Downloads folder and you wanna go find the most recent one thing that you downloaded, that's how I always find it, which is, happens to be right here. And you have to make sure you have unzipped it. If you try to upload it and it says this file is not supported, you know you haven't unzipped it, okay? But you saw me unzip it and here it is, ready to go. SVG, SVG image, this is what we want. So we click on open and it uploads to the Cricut Cloud servers. It shows us a preview, if it looks good, we go ahead and click upload. We don't have to name it if we don't want to. I don't usually. Now you'll see it uploaded right here. You can see all these other ones because of cl earlier classes. It's the same file, just ignore that part. <laughs> Normally you'll have just one upload for your, your project. So this is what we just uploaded. It'll always be in the far left side under recent uploads. Okay, and it shows you this screen as soon as you're finished uploading. So you click on this and then you click, make sure you've got this green box around it. And then you click add to canvas. And it, it brings it in and it looks, you're like, what the heck is that? That's huge. All I see is a star that doesn't look like what I uploaded. Remember we're zoomed in really close. So let's zoom out with our buttons right here on the lower left corner so we can see our project. There it is, right? So. Let's, and now let's just get rid of all this stuff. We'll delete it. And here is our certificate. And I'm gonna teach you how to put text on this. Change your text to writing with a pen. Change this, my signature, signature here also to writing with a pen and attach it to your layer and we're going to cut it out. Now, uh, first of all, anytime you upload an image, wherever it came from, whether you made it yourself or you got it from somewhere or you bought it or whatever, um, it usually comes in grouped, so you want to ungroup it, just a general rule. So right up here at the top is the ungroup command, so you want to click that. And now you can move things around and, you know, manipulate them on their own. Again, you can, you can change the colors. Let's change the color of this to red. And let's change the color of this one to teal, that pretty teal blue I had. Although it's gone now since I deleted it. <laughs> Uh, there we go. So remember you can use the spectrum here. Once you add colors to your canvas, they'll show up here at the top. So you can always pick those colors and make sure you have them. And that's important because if you don't pick the same color, it'll think it's a different, it'll put it like on a different mat for you. And that's a pain in the butt. We don't want that. So you wanna use the same colors if you really intend for it to be cut together. All right, so I've changed the colors of my things. Um, I could even use contour right now to change things about the certificate if I wanted to. I can come in here and I can like get rid of some of the stars if I wanted to, right? I can just do this and you know, I can get rid of all the stars if I wanted to. I didn't want stars. There's a lot of stars in this design though. 
there's even a star right there. That one will be hard to get rid of. <laughs> but when I do that and then close it, you can see, I've got, oh, I missed a star. <laughs> but you can get rid of a bunch of stars. I'm going to undo that so because I want all the stars. All right, so you can customize it if you want. What you don't want to do uh, is make it much smaller. Um, you could, if you want to change the size of this at all, you'll want to select everything. You can just drag a box around everything or you can choose select all up here at the top of the screen and then you would resize everything together okay like this so you can make it bigger i wouldn't go too much smaller because it might get difficult to cut i have an intentionally intricate cut for you to practice on so um, so that you can make sure that you're good to go for your paper crafting but i'm going to keep mine at the same size it's important to note this this is smaller it's supposed to be because it fits right into the certificate okay so um, let's add some text to it and personalize it. Let's zoom in here a little bit more. All right, so on here you can do whatever you want, but what I've done is, this is what we did in our earlier class, uh, congratulations to Jennifer Maker for completing Cricut Kickoff. So I recommend you put your name here and then um, my signature here. We're gonna change both of these to a pen and the pen, we're gonna have the Cricut write them. All right, so back in Cricut Design Space, we need our text here. So to add text, we click on text over here on the left and we type it on our text. So you get this add text here box and we just start typing on the keyboard. So I'm gonna type congratulations. And then to get to the next line, let me just show you what I'm doing here. No need to, because just in case, so here's my keyboard, right? You see this? So to get to the next line in my line, I'm actually gonna press the return key. And you can see here that it's gone to a new line, right? So you just, and so on the Mac it's called a return key and on Windows it's called the enter key. It's in the same spot though on your keyboard. So congratulations to, and then return again, Jennifer Maker, return for completing, return, Cricut kickoff. All one word, like that. You can spell it any way you want. You can write whatever you want here, by the way. I saw someone today do it in, was it Swedish? I can't remember, it was awesome. It was all Swedish, okay. So here's our text, yay, it's way too big. <laughs> So the first thing we need to do is make it smaller. So remember, we use the resize handle right down here to make it smaller. So I'm gonna click, hold, and drag until it looks like it's approximately the right size. That looks good. Move it over so it's at least in the center. Now it's also not centered, so we can change that. So once we have our text selected, we now have a new sub menu here. We can change the font the style, the font size, the letter spacing, that's how much space is between our letters, the line spacing, that's how much space is between each line and our alignment. So we, we want alignment. So I'm gonna click on alignment here and choose center. And now it's centered. And we need to change the style, the font and the style, because if I were to uh, draw this right now with the pen on my Cricut, and I'll show you what it would look like, we go right up now to operation and choose draw. This is how you change it to pen. What we get are these bubble letters. I'm gonna get in here so you can see that. So what it will do is just go around the outline of the letter. It doesn't fill it in. It's not a printer, right? It literally will go around the outline of your letter. What, that's not what we want. We want something more like this, right? This looks like it was written with a pen. So. What you want to do to get the effect that I have is to use a writing font, not just a whatever regular font. So um, to find a writing font, you click on, you select your text like I have here. We see the box around it. And then you click on font and you type in, um, well, I mean, maybe you know, but actually what you want to do is actually click on filters over on the far right side. So you can search, right? Right now, it's displaying all fonts that are available to me, free, paid, purchased, otherwise, everything. 
Um, I can actually look at just my system fonts, which are always going to be free because they're installed on my computer. I can look at just Cricut's fonts, which are both free and subscribed and um, for, you know, the ones I can buy. So there's a wide variety of fonts. All the little A's mean they're part of Cricut Access, and so I can use them while I'm a member. I can even like search just by current fonts. That's a whole other thing. We won't get into that tonight. But it you know, basically means the fonts look a little better because <laughs> they're current better for anyone who knows what that means. But I want to call your attention to filters right here. Filters lets you search by only your own fonts, fonts that you've uploaded or purchased, I think. That's what that is. Uh, Multi-layer fonts, single layer fonts, fonts you downloaded for offline use. And the most important one I want you to notice right now is writing. Writing fonts are what we want for our project tonight. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And now it's only gonna show us writing fonts, right? Now, uh, because I'm a Cricut Access member, these are all writing fonts that I can use without being charged anything extra. But because you are, may not be a Cricut Access member yet, I'm going to point you to a free one. Okay, so in under search fonts, I want you to type Cricut and then press return on your keyboard to search. And also, I want you to unclick, uncheck this only current fonts. If ever you can't find a font that, you're sw that you swear is there, uncheck this. Ta da! <laughs> um, some fonts have kerning information, some don't. By default, it only shows the, the pretty fonts. We want all the fonts though. So, with the font we want is called Cricut Alphabet. This is free, it's been free for as long as I've known. And I want you to see here it's got a multi layer option, a cutting option, and a writing option, which is what we want. So, I'm going to click on this. Just click on it. This, by the way, I know you're going to ask me this download over here, that's for doing offline work. Not really talking about that tonight, but you can download fonts to work offline. Okay, but we're not doing that. So we just want to click on the font itself and it will change our font to that one. All right, there we go. We're now we have Cricut Alphabet and our style is was pre-selected to writing because we had already changed our operation from cut to pen when we were talking about it. So if you didn't change your operation, then you need to do that. You need to change it over to writing, okay? Uh, and use pen. So for let, give me, let me show you an example. So let's say it was back on basic and um, it was on, this is what it would be like if you hadn't like done what I would done, had done. It would look like this. So you need to be sure, this is important. You have to change this to pen. And then you also have to change the style to writing. Okay, you have to do both of those things in order to get the same pretty writing look that I have. And there we go, that looks awesome. So I'm gonna put that right there. And I'm not missing stars, they're just kind of slid over there. Like, where'd my stars go? They're right there. All right, so let's center this on our card. We can, of course, to center things, we can actually select everything. We wanna center just like this. So I have three things selected you can see here and under a line I can choose to center horizontally and that centers everything for us. All right, so we're almost done. So we have our certificate text in our pen, but our signature on the other hand, I want you to know it's still set to basic cut. We don't want my signature cut out, we want it to draw it. So we have to change this operation too. So we just go on up to the operation menu, just like we did for the other text, and we change it from the default of basic cut to pen. And now we have pen for both our text here and the signature. And now, so we're not quite done yet. Right now, and if we were to go ahead and make it right now, I'm gonna show you what it does in fact. So you can just say, so first we're gonna save this projects, we've done all this work. I like to, I always like to save my project before I ever go to make it. <laughs> all right, let's say this as Cricut kickoff certificate. Did I spell that right? There we go, okay. All right, so I've saved it. Save early and often to spare yourself uh, headaches and save your sanity. That's what I say usually, right? Save early and often to save your sanity. 
<laughs> all right, so our project, um, we have changed our, all, anything we want drawn has been changed to pen, and the other layers are cut, right? So this layer is gonna be cut, and this layer is cut out of cardstock. So that's what our, we're doing tonight. If I were to make it right now, I want you to see what happens. So I'm just gonna click on make it in the upper right corner. What we get, first of all, asks us where we wanna load our materials. We'll say on mat, because we're gonna use our mats for this, and then click done. What we get is this. Our text just floating out here on nothing. This is not even a mat. It's literally just our pen on a mat. So if I were to actually send this to my <laughs> to my Cricut, it would like write all over my mat. <laughs> and um, our other layers are down here. They look okay, but the text isn't on the layer it's supposed to be. So we wanna cancel. And the reason why it's not is because we have yet to tell it where to go. So right now, these are all individual layers. They're all independent from one another. If I click on them, they're all loose. <laughs> they're all free agents. That's not what we want. We have to tell Cricut what to do with them. Do we want it to attach to this one? Do we wanna attach it to like something completely else? Of course, we wanna attach it to this, right? Let me undo back to where it was all nice and straight. There we go. So we are gonna use the attach command that I told you earlier about to attach it to this piece of cardstock, right? So to do that, we just select everything that we want to be attached. So that's our text layer, our signature layer, and our card layer. And you can see all three are selected. And all I did was just drag a box around them like this. But of course, we can also select from over on the layers panel um, by selecting, there's the pen, there's the text layer. Here's the signature layer. And, he, and I'm holding down the shift key, remember? And then here is the blue layer. So you can you, do either way. So now we have the three layers selected and now we click attach, which is right down here at the bottom of the layers panel. Now, if we click make it, we will see moment of truth we're gonna cut on the mat because we're cutting cardstock. Now we see our red layer, I did it. And here is our blue layer looking amazing in just the way we want it to be. All right, so uh, this is the prepare screen. It says prepare right up here. Right up here it tells us how many mats we're going to cut. So we have our red layer that says I did it and we have our, our blue layer and this it tells you what you're gonna do on each layer. So this layer says basic cut, and this layer says pen and basic cut. And you can move these things around on the mat if you need to. Um, typically, it's fine to leave them right in the default positions. There's some reasons sometimes when you might wanna move it, but it's mostly just, you know, to move things around on your mat for other reasons. <laughs> so we'll leave them all right there in the corner. And this looks good, so we click continue. All right, so I am connected to my Maker 3 by USB, and it says it looks like this device is already connected in a different window, which it actually is. So let's do retry, I might have to close that window. I was playing around with things before. Look at all my, look at all my crickets. Are you impressed? Because <laughs> I am. <laughs> like that's a lot of things to be connected right now. <laughs> let's try that again. <laughs> It is actually open another window. I'm gonna to have to go find that window and close it. I was playing around. So I actually wanna show you something else. I have extra windows here. Here's my Explore 3 window. Here is my Joy window. Here is my Maker 3. Let's close this one. This is my other one, right? Yes. All right, so you could have multiple windows in Cricut Design Space. And they can be connected to different Cricuts. Um, I do this fairly frequently when I want to do different projects. So let's see if this will connect now. Excellent, so see, you can connect, you can have multiple windows to do multiple projects, and all that matters is when you go to cut it, right? So if I, I can't cut this to the same machine and two different windows, that's two different directions. But if you have multiple window, multiple Cricuts, you can go up to the file. Can you see that? You can't see the file. Uh, 
I'll have to show you my entire window, which I can do. Hang on a second. Let's see here. Show primary display. There we go. Now the top here is red, I know. You can see where it says like the menu bar. It says Cricut Design Space. Oops, sorry, I'm not showing you right here. It says Cricut Design Space. There we go. Now you can see it. It helped if I was in the application. There's Cricut Design Space here at the top. So this is the like the menu bar that you see when you're inside an application. If I go to File, and this is true on both Windows and Mac, and I say New Window, I get a new window, okay? So if ever you wanted a new window to work on another project, because um, you're doing something else, what, who knows? I, do, I actually have a lot of windows open most of the time. <laughs> I just go start a new window and I leave the other thing open in the other window is what I do. But anyways, you can have multiple windows. So that's just, this is only something you can do on desktop. This is one of the desktop features. And I want to quit. Okay, but we are doing our Cricut Kickoff Certificate. So let's stack everything back up so that we're only looking at that. And I'll just go back to our um, current, there we go. There we go. So, th so that you can see things much bigger. Okay, so this is, there we are. So this is the Maker 3, and you can see it right up there, Maker 3. All right, so this is the Make screen. And on the make screen, this is where you choose your materials and your tools and actually say, hey, time to make it Cricut. So the first thing we do is set the base material. And for this project, we want medium cardstock, which is right here under popular. But if you don't see it, just click on browse on materials and you can search for it or you can scroll the list for it. I'll just search for it. There's medium cardstock right here. This is what I use for both 65 pound and 80 pound cardstock, which is what I'm using tonight. And I click done. So that's the material selection. There's a lot of materials to choose from. And it depends, of course, on which machine you're using. But I have the Maker 3, so I have all the options available to me right now. And then for pressure, I like to choose more pressure because it tends to give me a cleaner cut. And I like clean cuts. And then under there, there's an option that says Rem remember material settings. Click that so long as both layers that you're going to cut are the same material. And in our case, they are. They're both cardstock. So you'll want to click that. I also want to call your attention to what's going on over here on the side. These two can be clicked, right? So these are your two mats that you're going to cut. You could have more or less. And... Uh, you can actually do, you know, you can go and you can see if you hover over them, you can see how much material you need. You can see them right on the mat. And if you click this one, it'll cut this one first. If you don't, it'll start with the top one and move down. Okay, so it does kind of keep, it does, it does keep track of what it's cut and whatever it hasn't cut, it will try to cut for you. But so long as uh, you haven't switched around your mats at all, it should start with the first mat. So we'll have it start with the red mat like we want to. Okay. Now it tells us to load our tools and material. So no tools required in clamp A um, for this mat. For this mat, let's click on it so you can see, it does want us to put the black pen in. And uh, we're going to have the fine point blade. All right. So let's switch the camera over to the Cricut. Ooh, that's really, let's zoom out a little bit. <laughs> that's pretty close. We don't have to be quite so close. There we go. Oh my goodness, and there's two of me. I don't need that. <laughs> All right, here is the Cricut Maker 3, all ready to go. I want you to see over here that it's already blinking and telling us it's time to load the mat. That's what that little, remember I told you the little double arrow is? That means it's loading time. But we need to actually put our material on. So um, I'll be using a blue light grip mat. And I'll switch to my overhead. So my first layer is red, right? So we just take off our protective cover. Now you can use blue or green for this project. I have a bunch of blue mats, so I'm just using those. I usually use green, but blue is what we got tonight. All right, so here's my cardstock. 
This is the cardstock I showed you yesterday. I'll show you real quick what it is again. This is AC cardstock and it's the primary pack. It's really nice, quali high quality cardstock that matters. I'm getting nice clean cuts. All right, so this, this cardstock actually has two sides, a smooth side and a textured side. Whenever you have the option, like when there you have double like paper that's like that, you always want the smoother side against your mat. It'll help it stick better. So we just put it in the upper left corner, matching it up to the guidelines here. You can just press it down with your fingers or you can use a brayer tool, which will help keep it in place like this. All right, so let's switch over to our maker. And so we need our pen, right? So here is our pen. So we'll take off the cap, open up the clamp do that so you can see it. Put the pen in, tip down until it snaps like that. Close the clamp, put your cap on your pen like that. That helps you avoid losing it. <laughs> and then our fine point blade is in clamp B. So we've got the pen in clamp A and the blade in clamp B. And here is our mat with our material all ready to go. And we put that in between our guides on the, the, the Cricut Maker 3 and the Explore 3 have these guides on the sides here. And we slide it in under the guides like this. And we apply light pressure, right? And then we press the load and, un is that under the guide there? Oh, it wasn't, no. It's hard to see where I am. There we go. So it's under both guides, that's important. And then we press the load button. And it will bring it all the way in. Make sure you've got that space behind your Cricut, like we talked about in lesson one. Okay, because it's gonna bring that mat all the way in to make sure you have it before it starts. So definitely at least 10 inches behind your Cricut is important. All right, so we're now ready. And uh, the, the arrow button is flashing. That's, I usually just call it the flashing button. The button looks a little different on the Explore Air 2 and the original Maker, it looks like a little C. And on the Maker 3 and the Explore 3, it looks like a, like a play button, okay? Either way, same thing. That's the one you wanna press to start uh, cutting. That's our first layer, right? So back in Cricut Design Space, this is what we see. So it's detecting what tool to make sure you have the right tool installed. And if it, when it confirms that you do, because it can tell what tool you have, right? It'll start cutting out your project. And we'll watch it cut. So it's gonna cut all the little stars and the trophy and everything like that. And it shouldn't take too long. Um, oh, I wanted to tell you one thing that's important. Where is it? Ah, yes, here it is. Those of you that have a Maker 3 and an Explore 3 would have gotten in your, in your packages, you would have gotten a piece of smart paper, right? It looks like this. Um, it says sticker card stock. If you're new to crafting, you might be like, oh, I can use this for the project. Don't use this for the project. <laughs> uh, this is stick, like a sticker paper and will not behave the way, same way. It'll be a giant mess. Save this for something else. I actually have a whole tutorial on what you can do with those three sheets of, of material in your Maker 3 and Explore 3 box. And I will share it with you when I send you the replay links so that you can go make that if you want. I actually use this to make pantry labels. So don't use this for this project because you don't want that sticky stuff. It won't, cut, it, it won't work well for what we're doing. It'll, it'll be confusing. You want to use just a, just a cardstock like this. You can get cardstock in lots of places. You probably even have some at home. An old Christmas card will work. You know, old birthday card. Those are good, usually good quality cardstocks too. All right, let me switch this back so you can keep watching it. Oops, that's the wrong one. There we go. All right, it has finished cutting. When it's finished cutting, the load and unload button blinks, and we can take it out 
and this is what it looks like. You see the cut image. So let's go to our work surface. Whenever we have um, something cut in our mat, we wanna flip it over onto our work surface and peel it away from our, peel. we peel the mat away from our material and it works so much better and it avoids tearing and curling and all the bad things. You can use your finger to lift the pieces up or you can use a spatula tool, which we talked about in lesson two yesterday. Because this is, this is an intricate cut. All right, so this is what your mat looks like when you're done. And this is what your project looks like when you are done with it. And see, I did it. Isn't that awesome? You see? Look at how well it cut. Oh, there's a little piece here. Sometimes there'll be little pieces that didn't just come out. You can just pull them out like this and it did a lovely job. And so we clean our mat and put our next color on. I like to use the scraper tool to clean my mat. And I just scrape it all off like this. It doesn't hurt the mat or anything. I'm not pressing so hard that I'm taking off any adhesive or anything. And then we need our blue layer. I already cut a piece down. It needs to be, I think at least like six inches. By the way, you'll see my mat is currently got the um, centimeters on it, but you can flip it around to see. You can use both sides of the mat, it doesn't matter. Um, it's good in fact, rotate your mat. All right, so there is our blue layer. All right, let's go back to Cricut Design Space so you can see what it says right now. Um, it's telling us, we're now over here. It's telling us that we've already done red. Oops, there's my cursor. And now it's time to do the blue. So it marks the one that we're going to do next. So if ever, you know, if you're making like a shadow box that has like 10 layers and you don't know which color is next, come to the Design Space and check to see what color is next. Okay, so it's blue that's next. We have everything else set, so now we can just load it in. And it's going to write and cut. Is it under the guide? There we go. So we load it in, and I'm applying light pressure. Does that look good? Yes. And when it brings it in like this, it's making sure that it's aligned and straight and everything like that. Awesome, okay, so now our the button is flashing and it's ready for us to go ahead and start and it's going to draw it and cut it. So it's gonna draw first. Oops. I clearly didn't stick it down well enough. This is why I prefer green mats. They're just stickier. However, it's not gonna, it's not gonna cause an issue. <laughs> just stuck it down again. <laughs> so you can see it. Let's zoom it in a little closer so you can see what it's doing here. It's writing out the message. And it's using the pen. This, by the way, is a, the pen. This pen is the one that came with the maker. Um, the original maker, the Cricut Maker 3 doesn't come with a pen. Um, so you'll, you'll have to go get one if, to do this certificate, but it's good to have a pen. But this is the 0.4 fine point tip pen. And it, it writes like this, don't be alarmed. It writes in the most efficient way uh, so that it gets done faster. I'm gonna kind of push this down with my brayer here. I don't want that to get stuck again. <clears throat> All right, um, yep, so how are we doing? It's on Jennifer Maker right now. <laughs> it's under the thing so you can't quite see it, but it'll it's almost done. And then once it finishes the writing, it'll do the cutting. I love that it'll write and cut at the same time. You see there, you can see my name there. <laughs> and I see lots of questions. Don't worry, we're gonna answer your questions. 
I do see a I do see a comment about cleaning the blade. I yeah, whenever I do a project, I clean my blade with my aluminum foil ball, which I explained in yesterday's lesson. So I'm not gonna I'm gonna try not to repeat things I already did just because the intention is for people to watch the videos in order because it's important. Everything everything I do builds upon itself. This is true of Cricut Kickoff as well as Cricut College. It's important to understand what came before so that when I say something later, it makes sense. And also, if I just keep saying the same things, then, you know, we don't actually get to the heart of the matter then. <laughs> All right, now it's cutting, I believe. It's really quiet. If you were in my uh, three o'clock class, you could hear the difference. The Cricut Maker 3 is very quiet. All right, no, it just it was just doing my signature. Now it's cutting it out. And it's just putting four stars on the sides and then it's gonna cut around the edge. It's really fast. Awesome, finished. Okay, we back out a little bit more so we can see more of this. There we go. All right, so it's finished. And to unload it, we just press the unload button. And you can see here that it worked awesome. All right, so again, We want to just flip over our mat onto our surface like this and peel the mat away from the, ma the material. And this helps keep our material nice and straight. Look how straight that is. If we had done it the other way, if we had gone like this, I'll show you, if we had gone like this, we would have had curled material, right? So by doing it this way, we get nice straight material. And then we can take off our little stars. We can use those as confetti. You can throw them in the air when you finish. <laughs> Don't forget to put your cover back on your mat before you store it so it stays nice and clean. And I like to hang mine up with the little hang tag there. And then the way that this goes together, it's so easy. Uh, you just turn this over so that it's the reverse, right? So it's, you know, facing outward. And then you put the corners of your certificate right in here. These little cutouts here at the edges. If for any reason yours does not fit, that means that when you were designing it, playing around with it, you resized it um, and you need to go back and check it. <laughs> so this is the way it should be. This is the way it's designed. And there we go. Congratulations to Jennifer Maker for completing Cricut Kickoff. That's on one side. And then it says, I did it on the other. And what I really would love to see is everyone make this and then put it with your Cricut. You can put it like this. You can put it like this. I don't care. Take a picture of it and share it with me. <laughs> I love to see your certificates. I truly do. They're awesome and they're fun. And it makes me feel good when you make my stuff. All right. Don't forget to take out your pen and put the cap on. Now, I promised I would show um, some other, I didn't promise, I said if there was time, I would show some of the other crickets. I have them all hooked up. We could attempt um, one of the things, I have done this once before, where we actually cut to all of them at the same time. I have done it. So we could try it if you want. Does anyone wanna see what happens? It could be a huge failure. It could also work. <laughs> It'll be really noisy. Actually, it probably won't be all that bad. So this is the Explore Air 2. This is the Explore 3. This is the Maker. Back here, I know it's kind of hidden, but it's here. If you were in my 3 o'clock class, this is a different Maker. This is the one I usually use. <laughs> and even my Joy. So there's the joy. Can you see the joy? Go for it. Beth says go for it. I'm going for it. Oh, we need to get the joy in there. All right, so here's the maker. And 
And then, of course, we need a piece of paper for this one because it can't be left out. I want to see if we can do all five at the same time from one design space. I have never done it before, just for fun. This is my last class. This will be five plus three plus three, 11. This is number, this is class 11 in three days. So I'm just having fun. Plus it'd be cool. All right, so I'll put this one in. All right. Now the joy. Let's go find the joy. So let's go back to Cricut Design Space. So that's the maker. Check in the mat, right? I'm going to slide these all over so you can see all of them. There's the maker three. It's ready to go. Here is the Explore 3, medium cardstock, more pressure. That one's ready to go. Can you see all these? Yes, you can. Here is the Joy. We want medium cardstock, more pressure. Remember material settings. Load that one in. That one's loaded. <laughs> That look good. So I need to tilt that one a little bit to the side, okay. And then the maker, the original maker. Where is that window hiding here? A lot of windows here. There, we, there it is. <laughs> I, I'm probably really crazy, aren't I? It's probably going to be a terrible failure. I don't care. <laughs> I want to see if I can do it. Okay, maker. Do you see how I have all these windows up? Here is the Maker 3. So original Maker, Maker 3. Um, Explore Air 2. Explore 3 and the Joy. <laughs> oh, I might be getting a little punchy. Let's be honest. You can't even see my picture. Am I even up right now? There, you can see it now. <laughs> all right, I have them all up. Can you see they're all loaded? All loaded, all ready to go. Um, okay, so I'll show you only the joy. Actually, I just need to, all I have to do is press the go button on all of them, except the joy. The joy doesn't have any buttons. We actually control it from here. So I am going to press the go button on the joy, and then I'll press the go button on each one individually. So there's the joy. And is it blinking? This one's blinking. This one's not blinking. This one's blinking. This one's blinking. That one's not blinking. That's this one. Oh, I forgot to change the material. That's all. Got to hurry so I get them all. Again, again. <laughs> there we go. Nope. I want to see them all going. Did it. Five crickets from one cricket design space account. So <laughs> I did this once, I think, last year. I haven't done it since then. But I'm impressed. Are you guys impressed? <laughs> so for anyone who ever wonders, can you have multiple ones going? You totally can. <laughs> and they're all going to cut out. Oops, this, this mat is clearly not sticky enough. Let's fix that. Uh, they're all going to not even know what they're doing. I just, I just made them start going. So you can see the screen, though. I mean, look at this. It's a champ. Look at it. It's keeping track of everything. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? This is a real, I mean, OK. Uh, hopefully someone from Cricut is watching this. Great job, guys. This is really awesome that this is possible. This was not possible a few years ago at all. It would have been crazy. It would have been confusing. And, but they made a lot of improvements in the last year to Cricut Design Space. Things that, I don't know if you guys can hear me. I'm trying anyways. Um, things like under the hood that we can't even see. And that allows this to be possible. So. They deserve a huge round of applause. I don't think that 
they I don't think they get the credit they deserve. It's difficult to make something that's simple for so many people to use and still have good features. So good job, Cricut. Let's see. The Cricut Joy finished. We did start that one first. I'll unload that one. What else is finished? The original maker finished. The Explore 3 finished. The Explore Air is still going. And the maker is doing a different mat. It's like doing, the, these were all doing the cut only one. This is doing the right one. There's just no pen in there. So don't, don't let that think that it, it's slow. It's not slow. These are the two fastest ones. These are the two slower ones. This is probably the slowest one. Though I think the Maker and Explorer are pretty much... <laughs> Wasn't that awesome? Okay, that was really cool. All right. Let me do my little wrap up. <clears throat> do my little wrap up that I use for my end of my videos because we're going to edit this all down so that it is nice and clean and neat and doesn't have, you know, weird whatever in it. And we'll put this on YouTube later. So now it's doing the cut because it was doing the pretend writing. There's no pen in there. Be careful when it's moving. <laughs> Maybe don't do it. I just did. All right. Um, I'm going to do, I'm going to wait till that finishes actually. It'll be done in just a minute because it's kind of noisy. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to do my little um, conclusion and then I'm going to come back and answer your questions. Okay. So. All right, so if you have any questions about Cricut Design Space for Desktop app, please let me know. Leave your question below this video or ask in our Cricut Crafters group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters, where you can get help and guidance from hundreds of thousands of Cricut Crafters just like you. We are almost at 450,000 of us, and it's an awesome place to learn and connect with others. If you want to also learn about how to use Design Space on Android or on the iPhone or iPad, because they are quite different, I have lessons on those devices as well. Get links to those classes at cricutkickoff.com. And if you'd like to learn more about Cricut Design Space, I invite you over to my blog at jennifermaker.com for hundreds of free Cricut tutorials and projects. I also have a helpful guide called the Cricut Coach Playbook. Here it is. <laughs> that contains dozens of cheat sheets for design space. This is a very popular guide that has been used by over 300,000 Cricut owners and counting at the time I'm recording this video, and they tell me they find it really helpful. Thank you. If you'd like to learn more about Cricut Coach Playbook and get a free page for it, go to cricutcoach.com. And I also offer Cricut classes, workshops, and courses, including Cricut College, which I mentioned earlier, over at makeracademy.com. Come visit and sign up for something fun today. Thank you so much for joining me for your Cricut Kickoff. I hope this has helped you get on the path to success. And you'll be making many more wonderful things with your cutting machine. And if you do, please, please, please share photos in my Cricut Crafters group because I love to see your creations. It fills me up and keeps me going. Until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love. All right, let me answer your questions. I have a list of them right over here. Lots of questions. Lots of questions. <laughs> All right. Uh, Deb says, Deb W says, will there be new printables for Cricut Kickoff due to new machines and materials? I updated Cricut Kickoff. It is updated. It's, where is it? It's all updated. Maybe you have the old version. The new version has five machines on the cover. Okay, so I updated it just a few days ago. If you meant, on the other hand, Cricut Coach Playbook, this is all about design space. So design space did not change just because we got new machines. I have, have however, recently updated it. So either way, um, Kathy says, do you need your Cricut Maker to go into design space? Do you need to have a machine to use design space? No, you don't. You can actually download Cricut Design Space 
right now before you ever get your maker or whatever machine you're going to get and play with it before you ever get it. So I encourage you to go download it, watch lesson one to see how to do that, or just go download it at design.cricut.com and just skip the machine set up part, just make a Cricut ID and play with it. <clears throat> Helen says, what does it mean when an image says exclusive? Would you get it with Cricut access? I don't know what that means. I've never seen an image that says exclusive. I don't know, I have no idea. <laughs> Does anyone else know? I'm not even sure. I could only guess and I might guess wrong. So I probably shouldn't guess. Um, I don't know, yeah, I'm not sure. Anne says, if you're not an Access member, can you buy fonts, images, etc., from Access? Yes, you can. You don't have to be an Access member to get those things. You can just buy them. But after a while, it kind of adds up and it's better to get Access. It's up to you. But you can just buy them if you want. Yeah, the price is right at the bottom and it tells you how much it is. Molly says, I'm confused about Cricut Cloud. How do I get that? Everyone with a Cricut ID, which is free, has access to the Cricut Cloud. So, which is really actually amazing. There's no limit to how much you can upload to Cricut Design Space. Uh, at one point, poor Cricut, uh, and it was earlier this year, they were like, oh my gosh, our servers, they're just groaning under all of this. So we're gonna sit, we're gonna try to limit people and people did not like that. However, the, th the fact of the matter is, is that that is, that is a weight that they are carrying to allow us to upload all, their fold, fold, all of their folder, all of our files. And I'm grateful that they're doing that, but, but um, that is pretty amazing that they do that. I don't know of any other service that does that, but let's just upload thousands and thousands of files. Uh, but yeah, the Cricut Cloud just comes with Cricut ID and it's free. So uh, you can just upload your files. I have no idea if they won't, might not one day change that, but considering how people reacted to them attempting to like <laughs> not, to not do it, I don't think that they will. I think they'll do other things. Uh, but yeah, the Cricut Cloud is just a part of your Cricut ID and it's free. And as soon as you make a Cricut ID, you have access to the cloud and to upload your files and save your projects. It's pretty awesome. Uh, Dee Dee says, do we have to upload all projects to the cloud or is it done automatically? If you, you have to save your projects for them to be in the cloud. It is not automatic. There's no automatic save. Now, there is a fairly new feature that if you lose your connection while you're designing or you crash or something, it will sort of take a, you know, it'll sort of record what was there, and it's like a sort of snapshot of what was there. And when it comes back up on your computer, it will attempt to bring you back to the same place. So it's kind of like an auto save, but not quite, because it doesn't actually save it technically, okay? So you still need to save your projects. April says, can you share a project outside of Design Space if it's created in Design Space? You sure can. So long as you don't upload anything to your project, you can share it with others. It just has, you share the project link and it takes them right into the Design Space. But if you uploaded anything, any fonts, any SVG files, any PNGs or JPEGs, you can't share it because of licensing, because people will just upload things that they don't have permission to share. So that's why that is like that. Teacher4416 says, you can only work on one project in design space at a time. No, as you just saw. So, <laughs> um, so when a project is cutting, you cannot switch to another screen to work while you wait. Yes, you can. You totally can do that. So you can have multiple file windows open. And as long as they're, you know, they're busy, whatever. Yeah, you can just have multiple files open. The only thing you can't do is like be cutting to the same machine with two, like two windows. Like that's just not gonna work. But as long as you're not, you're only cutting in one window, you can be working in plenty of other windows. Do it all the time. Ashley says, can you upload any image? Does it have to be a certain type of image? You can upload PNGs, JPEGs, GIFs, and um, also HEIC images, those are the ones that you take on your phone, on an iPhone at least, HEIC. You can upload those as well. Oh, and BMPs, not many people still use those though. So five types. And then of course SVG. 
Eric says, what is the licensing use? So Cricut has what they call the angel policy. So all of their images, they're like their non-licensed images. So not the Disney, not the Marvel stuff. It falls under what's called the angel policy. And that allows you to uh, sh um, like sell it, right? So that's what you mean about licensing use. So you can sell the completed projects made with those images. But if it's a licensed image like Marvel or Disney or, you know, Hello Kitty, that's different. You can't sell those projects. So uh, to get more information about the angel policy, just go to, I don't remember the URL, but if you go to Google and type in Cricut angel policy, it'll come up for you. Joan says, let's just say you can't afford access. Can you use fonts from your own computer and SVG files you purchased elsewhere? Yeah, totally. Absolutely. That's what I did my first year. Uh, a lot of people just get fonts and they use their own fonts on their computer. So, and same for SVG files. So a lot of people, I know people who only use my SVG files, which don't cost anything. So yes, you can totally do that. Frida says, how do I do a test cut? I have a video on it, so I will refer you to the video. Could some member of my team find that video on YouTube and share it with her? It's just a, basically just, I'm not gonna explain it because the, the video explains it. So that's the best way to see how it's done. Uh, Michelle says, when rotating your image, is there a way to find the center line or exact diagonal mark like there is on the iPhone version? If you hold down your shift key, it rotates in increments. And so it's always going to be at that 45 degree angle or it's always gonna be at that 90 degree angle. That's how you wanna do it. Hold down your shift key. There's no shift key on the iPad and the Android, so it has to have that yellow line. But we don't have to worry about that because we've got a shift key. So that's all you do. Jack and Johnny says, is flatten only used for print and then cut or are there other uses for it? It's really only used for print and cut. Yeah. Susie C says, is there a way to have it do soft returns in a text box so that it returns automatically based on the size of the box? Not to my knowledge yet, no. There isn't a way to do that. You have to use hard returns. It's a great question. Gianna says, there are some bold writing fonts. I noticed that the font you use became significantly thinner in the writing mode. So there are, there's not really any bold writing fonts unless you kind of, uh, make them yourself, which I have done. It's very complicated to like fill it in. There aren't any fonts that will automatically fill in yet to my, you know, to my knowledge. There's a couple of fonts that will simulate it. However, I can't tell you what they are off the top of my head, but I've used them in some engraving projects so that when they engrave, they kind of fill in a little bit more. I also have a tutorial on how to fill in handwriting and it's um, on my blog. You should go look for that. It's not a simple thing, but it does work. <laughs> if, it's, if it's a special project, it's worth it. Jack and Johnny says, is there a way to save certain fonts as favorite so I can do a quick search for my favorite fonts in design space? Um, I don't think so, but I'm hoping that's a feature that might be coming soon. I, I don't know. When I say that, when I say I'm hoping for something, just make sure you know I'm, that's just me being hopeful. And also, well, it is also me noticing that people ask for this. And um, I've been watching Cricut long enough to know that when people ask for something like improvements to print and cut, the Cricut listens. And so if I see enough people ask for this and I have seen them ask for the, the favorite thing, um, I'm sure that someone is working on it. I'm just sure they are, but I don't know. No, there isn't currently. <laughs> That's the easy answer. Um, well, all I do is just make a note of what my favorite fonts are and I just search for them. So I don't even use favorites. Loretta says, what does multi-layer font mean? Multi-layer font means that there's two layers to it. And so one of the layers is usually a little bit bigger. And so you can use it kind of like an outline or offset. Sarah H says, I want to sell my products. How can I tell when I can use an image or font legally? Is there an option to pay for a license to use and sell my things? So the angel policy is what you're gonna to wanna to look up if it's a Cricut um, font or a Cricut image. If it's not one that's in Cricut Design Space, then you have to contact the person who created the design or the font. And different places have different rules. Like I know font bundles will let you buy a commercial license to use their fonts commercially. 
Um, if you want to ever use my designs, I allow people to sell the des um, finished projects they make with my designs without me asking for anything other than maybe a photo or something. <laughs> I like to get photos of, of your projects if you sell them. That's it. Curtis Family says, on the Make It screen, what does the material size refer to? What are the implications of changing the default size? The material size refers to uh, <clears throat> your, like your paper size. So let's say you are making um, a couple of these, right? Not just one. And uh, if you were using 12 by 12 paper, it probably can put them side by side. Where's another one of them? <clears throat> I don't know where it went. We'll pretend that this is one. It can put them side by side on a 12 by 12 inch piece of paper, but on an eight and a half by 11, it'd be too wide and you'd have to cut them like this. So when you change your material size there, it will rearrange the things on your mat to fit your material size. Try it, you'll see what I mean. Uh, Simka says, I'm using an Explore Air 2. After I hit Make It, a message pops up that says Project Incompatible, not supported by a current machine selection. To resolve, adjust layers, what should I do? I'd have to see your project to know. I can tell you that the, the chances are it's because your, um, chances are your project is too big to fit on your Explore Air 2. So it's usually that has to do with size and it says adjust layers, right? So go check the size and make sure it's under 11 and a half inches on all, both the width and the height, all layers. Um, if that isn't it, come ask in our Cricut Crafters group. Make sure you put a screenshot of your entire screen and make sure we can see your layers panel. Joni says, after you cut a project, save and close it. Can you come back several days later and edit the project again? Yes, you can. Just keep in mind that you can't undo. So once you've saved it, closed it, and then reopen it, all of your undo history is not there. So you just, you're starting from that point forward. But yes, you can totally edit the project again. You can move all your things around, change all your operations, colors, add stuff, all that. Shirley says, I followed all the steps. My laptop doesn't recognize my machine. How can I solve that? That's a lesson one question. Um, so I don't know if you were in that lesson one. Probably you said followed all the steps. It's so hard to know without knowing what's going on with your laptop. Like how close is your laptop? How good is your, is your Bluetooth? Like is your Bluetooth working on your laptop, right? Can you connect to other things via Bluetooth? Um, that there's a lot going on there. So answer those questions, figure that out and come to our group and ask us there because I can't help you without knowing all that stuff. But if you go posting Cricut Crafters and Makers with that information, tag me so I see it, I'll be able to give you more information. Ying says, question about the smart material. If the size of the project is only half of the width, so I would cut it and save the other half for another project. And when I want to use this piece, do I need to put it on a mat or can I still run it through the machine without the mat? Thank you. Great question. Let's see here. Yes, I can show you with this. So this is the piece of test material that came with the Maker 3 and Explore 3. You will note that when I went to cut out my sunflower, I trimmed the vinyl and but I left the liner. That means I can put it back into my machine to cut it again on this side because I didn't cut all the way through. So you have two options here. You can do what I did and maintain the width of your liner so that you can put it back through your Maker 3 or Explore 3 as a smart material without a mat. Or you can just cut it and put it on a mat and cut it as smart material on your mat. Either way, okay? And to do this cut, I just used my true control knife and I just made a, a light cut so that I wasn't cutting all the way through the liner. That's all I did. Uh, Jack and Johnny says, will the smart card stock sheet that came with the Maker 3 fit in a regular printer for print and cut? No, it will not. <laughs> Unless you have a special printer. My printer only does eight and a half by 11. That piece of card stock is 12 by 13. I don't know any printer that... I mean, I, I know there's some that do 12 by 12, but they don't do 12 by 13. So no, if you really wanted to use it, you can trim it to eight and a half by 11 and it will 
go through most printers. We tried it, we experimented with it, and it did go through our printer, but we had to use the manual bypass because it's really, th this is really thick paper, right? Very thick. So you'd have to have a printer that has a manual bypass, like up in the back, so it doesn't have to make any turns. Dee Dee says, we set the pressure to more for the first cut. Do we leave the pressure as more for the writing pass? Yeah, just use more pressure. You'll be happier. <laughs> that okay, sometimes you just don't need it. Like I use it for, I use more pressure for all of these. I'm, I will guarantee you if I take them all off right now, they're all gonna be, they're gonna all gonna be awesome. More pressure, it's just, it's just a little bit more. It's not like a lot, but it's always like just enough to give me that nice clean cut where it just falls off my mat. So yeah, even for the writing one. Now, if you're only doing writing and nothing else, you probably don't need it then, right? But I, I just use it anyways. Um, this is bugging me. We're gonna, we're gonna undo this. It's just sitting here. There we go. Uh, Gina says, how do you change your pen size? Uh, can you use a thicker or thinner pen for any design where you, where, and where do you specify that for the image? Can I use a gel pen? So Cricut pens come in a variety of different things. In yesterday's lesson, in lesson two, we talked all about the pens, so definitely review that. And um, you just change it right in Cricut Design Space. Let's go back in here to our craziness. Let's go find, what are we on? This is the Joy. Let's uh, say, here we go, this one. Uh, we'll finish this one and we'll come into our pen here. I'm selecting it here on the side. I know it's a little bit smaller. I'll try to bring everything in so that we can see it a little bit bigger. My screen adjusts to whatever's on it. All right, there we go. It's a little bigger now. Okay, so um, I've selected this pen and if we go up here to the, the color picker, you can change your, the, your pen here. So there's a headed on fine point, but if we want to say marker, uh, there's a marker. We can change the color here to gold, and this is what it'll look like. So you can, it helps you simulate it. That said, you don't have to have it set to marker to use marker. It doesn't, it doesn't know, it doesn't care. So you can just, I just keep it set to the default, and I just put whatever one I want in my machine. Okay. <laughs> I don't let that stop me. Nikki says, what are the best laptops to use for design space? I know there are some that don't support it, like Chromebooks. I just got my Cricut for Christmas and I, and I only have a phone and I'm looking to buy a laptop for it. The best laptop is the one that you can afford and runs design space. So if you go to Google and type in Google system requirements, uh, sorry, Cricut system requirements, Cricut will tell you the, the minimum requirements that you need. I rattled them up, off earlier and in lesson one too, but if you just go there, it'll tell you the basics it needs, the size of the RAM and the hard drive and the operating system, which is Windows 8 or Mac OS 10.15. I like Mac computers, but they're pricier. Um, honestly, you can get a really good laptop that runs design space for under 500 bucks. So I can't advise you on what those are. I'd have to do a little bit more research to tell you exact brand names. But since I'm not a Windows user, I use it, but that's not my preference. I mean, you know, I'd say go buy a MacBook, but <laughs> you might not want a MacBook. Uh, Mac and Windows is a very personal preference. <laughs> so um, Chromebook, by the way, isn't a laptop. I know it looks like one, but all it is is really a mobile device with a keyboard. It's very confusing. People get Chromebooks and they think they're laptops and, and then they're disappointed when they go to use it. But just so you know, that's really what it is. Um, so if it's not a Chromebook, you should be fine. Okay, that's really, that's really. The key would be to look at the operating system. Is it Windows 8 or higher? Is it OS 10.15 or higher? If so, you should be fine, okay? Uh, Becky says, design space tells me there's no internet connection. How do I work in design space if it's not connected? So you need to get an internet connection. That one's a hard one to troubleshoot because I don't know what's going on at your house, right? Uh, if you So I would start by restarting design space and then restarting your computer to figure out why it doesn't have an internet connection. Are you connected to Wi-Fi? Right? Do you actually have your computer connected? Is, does it work otherwise? Like figure out what's going on with your computer's internet connection first, and that usually will clear up any issues. Um, 
If you don't have really strong internet, that might be an issue. So you got to move closer to your internet, right? You might have to move closer. You, you can get um, Wi-Fi boosters for your house that can extend your signal to other parts that might make it easier for you to get your internet because you need internet in your computer for it to work. And you do need some internet. You can work offline, but you have to, you have to get online at least once a month to get updates, to download stuff, that kind of thing. So you need to have some internet to at least get things set up. And the last question is from Ginny, and it says, your design space showed more images than mine. Do I need to update? Um, I don't know why it shows more images. I actually noticed that in the iPad, in the Android, and, and on my desktop, I saw a different number of images. Chances are, it's because of the machine that was selected. So it's nothing that has anything to do with you. So not all images are available for all machines. The Joy has some images that are just for it, right? And there's some things that you can't do on the Joy and they're only on the Explorer or the Maker. And this, the Maker can do even more. So chances are that's what's actually going on. It's also possible that my uploaded images are included in that count. I don't know for sure. I'm not sure how they calculate it. So no, I don't think it's anything that you have to do. All right, and then I saw a question about Cricut College, and I want to tell you about that before we go. So yesterday, someone asked me about Cricut College, and I saw a couple of you asking about it as well. So Cricut College is my course for Design Space. So it is actually it is the next step after Cricut Kickoff if you want to keep learning about Cricut Design Space. So in Cricut College, I lead you through step-by-step step everything after this point. And we go nice and slow. We take things one step at a time through units that build off each other. And someone asked yesterday if they could do it. And so we have decided to open enrollment for it. We only do Cricut College um, periodically throughout the year. It's not, enrollment is not open all the time, um, but it's going to be open right now for, I don't know how many days, but until January 8th. So if you want to learn about it, I think it's here. Yes, you can go to jennifermaker.com slash Cricut College and you will want to enroll soon because once it's closed, you won't be able to get in until we open it again. I don't know when we'll open it again. It could be in summer but it could be also be in the fall. It just depends on what we have going on because it's important to us that we are able to support you. So we don't just leave it open all the time. We like to have enrollment sections. And I think many of you have already taken it. I could, I've seen comments about that. So it's awesome. I love that when my students come back, I actually ask all of my Cricut College students to take Cricut Kickoff. That is actually the first step so that we are all on the same page and you've learned how to make your certificates. Um, this is really important because everything builds off of this point. So in our first, in fact, I was gonna show you what it looks like. Um, Let's see here if I can find it. <laughs> here it is. Is this it? I don't know where it is now. Oh, here it is. When this is my, no. This is it, but let me just show you just my browser. Um, Cricut Design, uh, Google Chrome, there we go. There we go, okay. This is Cricut College. So if you go to the link that you see at the top of this page, that will take you to this page and it will tell you all about Cricut Design Space. So if you want to learn more, come join us in Cricut College Design to Shine. Our first project is this super cute pop-up card. Our second project is how to make iron-on t-shirts. And our third is the um, door hanger. We make lots of other things. There's actually a picture of everything that we make down here. And these are not tutorial tutorials like are on my blog. You actually design all of these things yourself. So they're very unique to you. And I show you how to do this. So Design to Shine is how to design in Cricut Design Space. It's really cool, it's um, unusual. I don't know of anything else like it. It's not just, here I made a thing for you, upload it. This is what you do. That's how my tutorials normally are. I try to make them very simple, like ready to make projects. Design to Shine teaches you how to actually use Cricut Design Space so that you don't have to get SVGs and you can do everything you want on your own. 
That is the goal of it. And I think it works really well. I have seen our students make the most amazing, amazing things. So um, go check it out and see if you'd like to join us in Cricket College. Just make sure that you've enrolled before we close enrollment. E. Miller says, can Cricket College upgrade to platinum be done at any time? Yes. You can totally get silver right now. There's three tiers, silver, gold, and platinum. Um, obviously silver is least expensive. You can totally just get silver now, see what you think about it, and upgrade at any time. And I also have, like for everything I do, I have a, a 30 day happiness guarantee. So if you don't decide that you don't like my style of teaching or whatever, you just let us know and we just refund you. It doesn't cost anything extra. Uh, or it doesn't, there's, we don't ask you, that's what I'm trying to say. We don't ask you why or anything. It's, it's, a, it's just, sure, no problem. It just has to be within 30 days because of the processing companies, not because of us, um, to just the rules and stuff. What's I going to say? Oh, I want you to know that Cricut College is for all platforms. So we talked about desktop tonight, but it also covers Android and iPad and iPhone, and they each have their own videos. And then, and then we actually, I show you how to make the thing you designed um, step by step. So it's both um, the designing of the project and you design it yourself. You're not uploading any SVGs. You are designing it yourself. It is not hard. It is fun. And then you make it and I show you how to make it. And then I even have what I call behind the design videos where I have uh, recorded myself creating designs and narrating it and I share it with you so you can see how I did some of the amazing things I did and a lot of times that can be really helpful when you're trying to do more amazing things yourself. So that's included in it as well with all of the units. All right. Oh, there's a question also. Kim says, when does Cricket College begin? Cricket College is on demand and self-paced. So as soon as you enroll, it begins. I saw someone this morning say that she had enrolled and already started on unit one. So as soon as you, so it can start whenever you want. So you can enroll now, um, but not start until, I don't know, February because you're busy, but you want to get in before the enrollment ends, right? You can start now and binge watch and binge make everything and have it all done faster. You can go as fast or as slow as you want. You can rewatch everything. You can even download all the videos. It's obviously video based because I'm video based, but we have workbooks as well because obviously I like workbooks too. So everything has a video. Everything has a workbook. Also, they have transcripts and they have MP3 so you can just listen like in your car. It's got everything. <laughs> I tried to cover all the bases. It's very comprehensive. It covers everything about Cricut Design Space that I know of. Um, and Lillian says, what's the difference between academy and college? Maker Academy is my umbrella name for all of my stuff, all of my courses, books, workshops, classes, events, everything, Maker Academy. It's like the umbrella. And then under that, I have various courses and classes and workshops. So that's what you mean. So it's just a name. It's just a name. That's it. College is part of the academy, right? <laughs> uh, Mess says, are the projects in Cricket College for the joy? Yes, they are. And can I just like point that out? I need to like, mar we need to marvel at this. I'm going to go back to our webpage. Um, so yeah, this isn't that big, no big deal, but this shirt made on a joy, this sign made on a joy, all of these things made on a joy. This one, not joy, this one is joy, right? So whatever, it can't be made, the big ones, sometimes the big ones can't be made on joy, but there's always an alternative for joy if that's the case. The only time all of these, even you can cut faux leather on the Joy, I tell you how to. Your shadow box will just be a little smaller. You can do all this on the Joy though. You can, this is the ver Joy version of the shadow box here. This is the only one that's tricky because Joy can't do print and cut. But I even uh, give you a little cheater method for print and cut for the Joy. It's still possible. I was impressed with myself. So I actually, and, and it's not just Joy, just so that's clear. I know I'm talking about Joy. This is for all of the machines. So Cricut College Design to Shine, that's the full name in the course, is all five Cricut machines and all three platforms, desktop, iOS, and Android. 
It's the whole shebang. Everyone is included. No one is excluded except maybe people who have Cricut expression because they can't even use Cricut Design Space. So I guess they're not included, but that was, I never, I don't even have a Cricut expression, so, and it can't use Cricut Design Space, so I'm lost there. <laughs> All right, I think I should wrap up. Um, I'm checking to see if there's no, I think I got all the questions. If for some reason I missed your question, remember you can get your question answered over in my Cricut Crafters group. You can also email us, where's my email link? You can email us. So if you have questions um, about Cricut Kickoff, Cricut College, a tutorial, just email us, we'd be happy to help you out. And I think that's it. I think we have finished Cricut Kickoff. That's awesome, 11 videos in three days. Thank you to everyone who has joined me. Thank you to my team. You guys are amazing. This has been quite the marathon to do, and I'm so impressed that we did it. Everybody, pat on the back. This is amazing. You guys are all awesome. I have the best team in the world. Greg is here. He came in to escort me home because it's snowing here in Ann Arbor. He says it's really, really slippery, so he's going to help me. See? It's awesome. All right, so I'm going to wrap up. Now, these videos will remain available for replay on my Facebook page. They'll never go away. They'll just be there in all their glory. <laughs> I link to them even if you ever want to like watch the whole thing unedited. But we do edit these videos down so that they're easier to follow, a little shorter. We actually separate the Q&A from the instruction because, you know, it's been like over two hours now. That's a long time for a class. So we kind of break it down. And we put the best of them up on YouTube, but all of them go into cricketkickoff.com. And everyone will get an email with a link to all of the replays, okay? So that you, if you missed anything, you will have a link to all the replays. Okay, I think that's it. Thank you everybody so much for joining us for Cricket Kickoff. This is a lot of fun, and I'm so excited to see all of your certificates, okay? Make these, post pictures of them. I'll be watching for them. Okay, have a great night, everybody. I love you, and I will see you after I've had a little rest. Bye.